Ready when you are. I wonder if raptodons have taste buds.
Sure. Yep, be right over. Like a raft among the rocks. And here we are. Told you we'd make it in one piece. Station ain't too far now.
you! Get over here! There are marauders up ahead! Did marauders navigate the caverns? This station's under the protection of the corporate compliance crew. You a marauder? Cause me and my sunshine? That's my gun if you were wondering. We don't take kindly to marauders. A coherent enough response, I reckon. Must be true. You're clear, but I would caution you against pressing on ahead. This station's plumb crawling with marauders, you know. Hey, we're here to help. Long as the paperwork's done and the pay's good. Me and Sunshine are doing exactly what we've been tasked with. And that's guarding these big old devil's peak horns. There is nothing I'd enjoy more, but the C3s play it by the book. Usually. Go petition the boss man. Maybe you can convince him to alter my duties. You ought to talk to my crew. They're guarding a small barracks to the southeast, by the edge of the mountain. See that path that runs underneath that giant archway? Follow it on down. There's a little station near the cliff. You'll find the rest of my crew there.
So the ship talks? Do all ships do that? Well, I can't say for certain, since i only ever been on this one. Ada's something special, though, ain't she? Ada, what is... It. She? It? I I'm a bit fuzzy on the details. It used to be I thought she was a simulated intelligence. You know, a long series of commands telling her how to react to certain inputs. You used to. What do you think now? Well, I worked with a lot of machines, and ain't none of them like her. Hey, Manic Queen Slayer. Glad you made it in one piece. After all, not everyone's so lucky. Meet my corporate compliance crew. Then check out our weapons locker inside. I reckon you'll find something you like. Then we call it even between us. We were hired to do so, why else? You did get the memo that we're mercenaries. Our client's a bit unorthodox, sure. He calls himself the broker, and prefers the glow of a terminal to flesh and blood interaction. But I can't fault his work ethic. Our current gig's to stop by means of lethal force, any creatures exiting the caverns, including but not limited to marauders, iconoclasts, and agents operating for the MSI. You drive a hard bargain, Manic Queen Slayer. It don't make much financial sense for C3 to expend resources on any killing beyond the contract stipulations. As the Marauders didn't enter from the caves, the requirements are... Mm, murky. At the same time, we do want to keep our client alive. Until the payment's cleared. We recommended the client safeguard himself, so I don't expect that the main doors will be accessible. Find a way to open them, and we'll clear any hostels on the inside. I'd best radio ahead for Joy and Hudson to prep for us. They'll be at the station entrance, ready with our finest auto mechanicals to assist you. C3s, prepare to move out. We're locked and loaded. Joy and Hudson know you're coming. We'll back you in the frontal assault on Devil's Peak.
So Ada isn't really alive, but it, sorry, she can still talk like a person. What about Sam? What's it? Sorry. He, is he the same thing? Well, Sam's an auto-mechanical thing, not a computer brain thing like Ada. I don't think Sam understands gender, so you can call him it if you want. There you are. Right, but she's a machine. When he's a machine, how are they different? You know how I said Ada was spe- That- I always wanted to poke through a high gain wireless. They only got one on Terra 2, you know, up in Byzantium. To be- Fox radioed ahead. Said I'm to follow you. Provide whatever support you need. If those bastards start shooting, we'll join in. I gotta warn you, my girl Sunshine here is a tad trigger happy. Of course, me and her will follow your lead. Just wanted you to know we wouldn't begrudge you of any violent inclinations. I'm just gonna put this out there. That is a dumb fucking idea. You've got two highly productive purveyors of death at your command, and you ain't going to unleash us? But it's your call. We'll still back you up if you run into trouble. Go on ahead. C3's got your six.
Grinder. Please pay your grave safety. <laughs> Fighting ain't gonna get easier on the inside. Best hurry before the Marauders regroup. We'll keep watch out here.
Hiram must have sealed the door. He's... he spooks easily. You may not realize this, being as you're an outsider, but the blaring alarms indicate the station's on lockdown. Which means you can't ever get to me. So leave already. <laughs> can't? We'll see about that.
here's the elevator, but it ain't gonna budge while this place is on lockdown. Guess we keep moving forward. Look for another way up. Incoming! out there whoever you are yes yes i can see you 
you. Come here and talk to me. Face to intercom. I can't tell if you're brave or simply touched in the head. What in the galaxy are you doing sniffing around my station? Unless you are, in fact, trying to suicide by Marauder? And you, Nioka, what are you doing lugging a stranger into my station? You could use the socialization, you son of a bitch. Also, he hired me. To what purpose? I happen to have some significant problems I am dealing with right now. Marauders? Running out of purpleberry wine three days ago, not being able to bloody broadcast. No, no, no. We'll deal with information-related business later. As I said, there are bigger problems threatening my life and livelihood at this very moment. The Marauders want me dead. And since my hired hands have clearly turned to idle, it appears I need you to clear out the threat. As my newest contractor, you may call me... The Broker. Or we can call you Hiram, on account of that's your damn name, and doubly on the account of the broker being a dumbass alternative. What? Everyone calls me that. Aside from you. Oh, now they'll take action. It's about time, I tell you. I'm up to my neck and marauders in here, which, by the by, they were supposed to prevent. I barricaded the broadcast center, but I can only hold out for so long. Clear the marauders out, and I'll pay you double the going rate. They destroy the transmission equipment, and I'll be out of business. The elevator and doors to the second floor are back online. Hurry before I have to lock them down again. Too many considering I hired a bunch of no-good mercs to keep them out in the first place. Already, they've caused considerable damage to the station's property. If they take down the broadcast equipment, I'll be out of a job, permanently.
Elevators to your right. Get ready. Light him on fire, ladies and gents! Huh? Something's not right. I think.
Never thought I'd be ecstatic at having the walls painted in blood, but seeing as it's not mine, I'd say this calls for a celebration. And you got me my money's worth out of the C3s. I ought to have simply dealt with you in the first place. Oh no, my business is in trade, not owing others the burden of a favor. This ought to square our debt, one hefty payment for a highly valued service rendered. But, I admit, I do wonder why Nioka has brought you to me. Allow me to pose my question in another manner. Why, in the nebula, are you here? Ah yes, our little chat on the intercom. You're looking for the prom Phineas must have sent you. He's the only one insane enough to send someone to Monarch to rush me. I knew it was only a matter of time before he came a-knocking. Look, I might be late, but I fulfill my contracts, always. Oh, you do, do you? I have lost track of the number of beers you owe me for chasing Raptodons off your stoop. Are you fibbing? Be honest. I take offense to that. Look, okay. Just, it might take me a while this time. I am awaiting but a single incoming transmission containing the information we desire. But MSI and the Iconoclasts are clogging the airwaves from Stellar Bay and Amber Heights. In their war against each other, they're scrambling each other's outgoing transmissions. The bandwidth! There's too much blasted background noise. Nothing gets through but their local broadcasts. Which of course has inadvertently affected the incoming port and my livelihood.
Graham and his iconoclasts believe anarchy is the way of life. Sanjar opposes it, as he's taking strides to corporatize Stellar Bay. No, they're jamming the limited frequencies we have at our disposal. Nothing extraplanetary can get in or out until the frequency pollution thins out. The safest bet is to convince Graham and Sanjar to stop transmitting on their end. Amber Heights is one of the only surviving settlements outside of... Graham Bryant and the Iconoclast there got their hands on a working relay station. Now they're ceaselessly transmitting philosophist ramblings on my airwaves. My former partner, Sanjar, transmits from his office in MSI. Don't let him try to fool you. While his messages might seem like gibberish, they are in reality coded business orders to off-world companies. I understand why he needs the bandwidth, but we had a deal and he's broadcasting ceaselessly. You do that, I'll be here waiting on the receiving end. Luck be with you. I have a feeling you'll be needing a pinch of it, plus a vat of patience. Oh, great. I loved it. Aw, you c I'd normally entertain your self-aggrandizing delusions, but this time... Important to you is not the same as important to me. Although I do recognize that you may have earned some goodwill during... Tug on my heartstrings, why don't you? Look, I'll do what I can, all right? Rebecca Hodges and Anders Wattsworth. They took a UDL contract back when Monarch went to ship, and I need to find them. I believe them to be on Terra too. If UDL hired two hunters back then, it would have been for creature clearing purposes round one of their spacer's choice outposts. These are the coordinates for the outpost under the last UDL contract. Now scram. And, uh, good luck. Is that a trick question? Of course, I could offer you a vastly more interesting... We'll call it an exchange. Ask me... There are so many mem... If you try to cite me on this, I will deny, deny, deny. Do you understand? What I am about to reveal is the sort... MSI's ownership of Monarch is technically legal but it would give MSI too much power on the board to grant them such status. Exactly. But you didn't hear so much as a whisper of such from me. They are a curious lot. Insufferable. And short-sighted, too. You mean between MSI, the Iconoclasts, and myself? I bet neither of those megalomaniacs told you I was the true mastermind behind... Back when the colony was still Terra-1 and corporations were abandoning us left and right, I'm the one who approached Sanjar and Graham with the means to our... I offered them a legal way to take control of the planet. If MSI were the only corporation here, they could claim sole ownership. Even then I plied my trade as an information broker, albeit in a smaller capacity. Of course I demanded an exchange for the data. Thus the bargain was struck. They could run MSI while I would operate Devil's Peak Station. Unfortunately, relations have soured over time. Competing ideologies. Graham believes Sanjar has become corrupted by the corporate lifestyle, that he is now similar to the original corporate executives they sought to... And Sanjar has learned the hard way that Graham is... Sanjar is not actually at fault for his past performance reviews, but he can keep hunting for loopholes to get back on the board for the next century. He'll never be reinstated. 
Not in his lifetime. For Nebula's sake, even with the loophole I gave him, he's only in charge of MSI because every other exec died during the massacre. I gave Sanjar and Graham legal information that would allow MSI to own Terra One. Once the other corpor- The execs had their concerns, but before the matter could be resolved, pirates raided their- Some say Graham suffers from nightmares that leave him sweat dread. I would assume it stems from the friends and family he lost in Amber Heights all those years ago. Luckily for you, I am a very- Not much. Phineas has been in hiding for the past 35 years. He got in touch with Nyoka first, who I use as a physical go-between. The rest is... As far as what's between us, I mean. Outside of that... I do know this. There is a sharper side to the good scientist than you'd expect. If allegations are to be believed, the experiments he conducts for the greater good are in fact treasonous and for self-gain. I am not convinced as to the validity of these allegations considering the source, but I am also not unconvinced either. Luckily... What? No. Why would I go out of my way to intercept messages from Earth? There's no market for them. No buyer means it's not worth my time. Now, if you wanted me to intercept a certain one, that might be worth it for the right price. How low you see. I may have a secret for you, for the right exchange. Nioka, pick me up some stimulation and a bottle of purple berry wine when you're next. <laughs>